Namaste, Mr. Bustard here. Uh, again, we're talking now about systems of equations, and uh, as was your bonus on the quiz, a uh, system of equations is two uh, equations, uh, simultaneous, sometimes they're called simultaneous equations, happening at the same time. A solution to a system is any point that they have in common, all right, or any x and y that they, both equations share. And if we take a look at these two equations here, we've got y equals x plus 10, 1 x plus 10, and x plus y equals 12. I've graphed here y equals x plus 10, and then going down will be the x plus y equals 12. All right, we need to have the arrows on the ends of our lines. But I can, if I graph them both, they intersect at this point right here. That's 1, 11. 1, 11. 1 for x and 11 for y. 1 for x, 11 for y. Is, works for both. It's the only point that is a part of both equations. All right? Any other e solution to this equation will not work up here. Any other solution to this equation won't work down here. So 1, 11 would be the solution to the system. It's the point that they have in common. We think about lines. We have our, if our system is a linear system, then two lines. Most of the time, two lines are going to, right? Most of the time, our two lines are going to meet and cross and have one solution, right? One common point, right? Sometimes we'll have a solution. That will have, I'm sorry, we'll have a system that has no solution because the lines are parallel. And at this point, when we say parallel, you should know that or think that, oh, that means that they have the same slope. Same slope, all right, parallel. Uh, now, and it could be that we graph one line, like blue, and the second line in the system is, ends up being exactly the same. And so all the points on the one line are also on the other. All right, we say that this uh, e system has infinitely many solutions if they're the same exact line, because every point on the one line will also be part of the other, so they have every point in common. And again, you, go, you don't want to say all real numbers because not all points are part, but any uh, point that was on one would be on the other one. So these are the three options. Right? Either they cross because their slopes are different, so they'll meet in one point, there'll be one solution. If they're parallel because they have the same slope, um, but they are parallel, then they will have no solution. And if they have the same slope and they're the exact same line, they'll have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so here's an example. If I uh, draw the graphs of these lines and see where they meet, uh, for this top line, it's in standard form, so I'll find the two intercepts. The x-intercept is 6. You see, guys, if I put 0 in for y, x would equal 6. And then the y-intercept, if I put 0 in for x, the y-intercept is 3. So in green, let's see how well I can do this. Not very well. Sorry, that's embarrassing. All right. And... I think we're going to understand that if we draw a, a cruddy line, right, my chances of actually hitting the thing are not very good. So I need a, I need a straight edge. I need some sort of uh, way that I'm going to be able to draw a line that goes through both points. So there's one. Let me use my magical ruler here. Just do this, can I? And I can. Now you might not be able to do that, so make sure you draw a good line. Uh, and I'll put arrows on in a second. Now the other one is y goes 4x minus 2. So if I plot negative 2 as the y-intercept, because it's in slope-intercept form, and rise of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 of 2, hot dog, it goes right through 2, 2. So I, I suspect that 2, 2 is the solution. And then what I should do is I should put 2 back in to the top equation to see if it's true. 
2 plus 2 times 2 is 4 is 6. That's true. And 2 equals uh, 4 times 2 is 8 minus 2 is 6. Well, that doesn't work at all, does it? What's wrong with that? Oh, slope is 1. So this, so that, all right, let's get out of here. Slope is 4 over 1. So it should be right there. Oh, boy. That's not going to be fun at all, is it? So this isn't going to hit on a, on a whole number at all. It's going to make it a little diffi difficult. So instead of solving by graphing, um, what we're going to choose to do is solve by substitution. And especially, you know, especially if the um, if the graph is not going to come out to a whole number, it's hard to tell. Um, you may want to use this method, solving by substitution. Okay, so I want to know what the x and y that is the same for both. So I know in the second equation y equals 4x minus 2. So I want to know in the first equation, 1 does y equal this, 4x minus 2, that it would in the second equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 4x minus 2, which is equal to y in the second equation, and I'm going to substitute it into the first equation for y. So now I'll know when y is equal to that for both equations. So I rewrite the first equation instead of x plus 2y, it becomes x plus 2 times, again, 4x minus 2, because that's what y is equal to. And then I go ahead and solve this. Distribute the 2. Um, I'm going to take it all the way down here. All right, so x plus, the distributed 2 is going to be 8x minus 4 equals 6. So 9x minus 4 equals 6. Add 4 to both sides, we get 9x equals 10. So x equals 10 ninths or 1 and 1 ninth. So what is y equal? Well, we take this 10 ninths or the 1 and 1 ninth number, and now we're going to substitute it back into the other equation for x because it's equal to x. All right. So now bring this equation down here. We got y equals, and again, instead of 4x, it's going to be 4 times 10 ninths minus 2. So 40 ninths minus 2 is going to be 18 ninths. And so I believe that that's 22 ninths or 2 and ninths. So, 1 and 1 tenth, 1 and 1 ninth rather, and 2 and 4 ninths is right about in there where I would have had my intersection. But it would have been really uh, impossible almost for me to, well that's why. Sorry bro. So x was was x 10 ninths? So 10 ninths, comma, 22 ninths. All right, and this would be OK. This would be good. But again, it would be very difficult by graphing to be able to tell that. So that's when I might use substitution. Um, looking here, I might graph. Uh, I might sub I might solve by substitution. If I solve by substitution, I need to first solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So if I take a look at both equations, which one do you think would be easier to solve 
for one of the variables. Get one of them in function form, either get x by itself or y by itself. I'm hoping that you said that you felt that it was the easiest to solve this top equation for y. And I think it will be, because all you need to do to solve for y is to subtract 4x from both sides. So if we rewrite the first equation, it becomes y equals negative 4x plus 5. And then I would take that, and I would substitute the y value, negative 4x plus 5, into y in the other equation. So rewrite that. Now it becomes, instead of 3x plus 5y, becomes 3x times 5, and then you substitute in the negative 4x plus 5. Uh, go ahead and solve. Welcome to chapter 3. This is going to be pretty nice because it looks like I subtract 25 from both sides, I get negative 17x equals 0. So x equals 0. All right, so with x equal to 0, go ahead and pop that in either equation. Um, and y equals 5. So 0, 5 would be where those two lines intersect. Now this is also showing that uh, if I solve them both, right, if I subtracted the 4x, I got that. If I solve the second one, put this one in function form, I would get this. And you could go ahead and Take this and substitute it in there for y. So negative 3 fifths x plus 5 equals negative 4x plus 5. That only happens when x equals 0. So, I mean, you could do this in a bunch of different ways. You could solve each equation and substitute in. Uh, and again, now this one, this one might be good to solve by graphing. You could also make a chart for both and find the points that they have in common. Um, depending on how well you can graph, you know, with a parabola, slope of 3, one, two, three, go back one, one, two, three, go back one. All right, there's my line. And then my parabola has a uh, vertex of 0, negative 4. And since A is 1, as we learned today in class, right, Very difficult to solve this one by uh, graphing. Again, I get negative one and a half, and then whatever that happens to be. Uh, and I might get close, but I probably need another. I probably need another method for that, uh, which we can talk about uh, next time. So that's solving systems equations. You're finding the point that they both have in common. Went a little over, but uh, that will get you to what we need to do in order to do our problem set in class. Um, thank you very much.